this is a very good video I think this person I'm not sure if it's these people here but just the truth put this post out I can't see that it's a YouTube video I don't know where it's come from <clears throat> I don't even know who made the video unless it was this person here but um, I thought it was a really good explanation I don't want to say very much because you have to watch the video um, yeah so I'm not taking credit for this video at all so this person here put it out it's an excellent video to explain our eyes and what it all means our eyes are gyroscopes and the rest is going to be on the video Guys, today I want to talk about the awesome fact that our eyes are actually mini gyroscopes or more specifically our own built-in attitude indicators just like on an airplane don't you think that's quite amazing that it's all built in us we're always looking externally for things always thinking you know oh I've got this really good video game it's virtual reality but you don't realize that you actually live in virtual reality that's what we're living in so you know our eyes are gyroscopes oh well it makes sense doesn't it now when you realize that that's what it is but it's crazy because we just don't think this way because we're not taught any of this stuff I really like how this guy explains this video so um, I think what we'll do is we'll just play a bit more our eyes work in conjunction with the horizon which is rendered by each person's eyes depending on his or her height and altitude the horizon rendered by our eyes acts just like the horizon reference arm of a plane's attitude indicator, also known as the artificial horizon. Now this also demonstrates that our eyes are built for a flat plane only. The functionality of our eyes and the fact that they always render the horizon at our eye level is what allows us to see using perspective to distinguish up from down a gradient that is sloping downward or sloping upward, near from far, and truly proves that we do not live on a ball. Now, when you turn your head sideways, the orientation of the object you're looking at does not change. This doesn't happen when you record a video sideways with a camera. In fact, that's very annoying. So why do your eyes do that? Well, it's because your eyeballs are mini gyroscopes. They do not turn with your head. They work just like a plane's gyroscope, but better. You can check this out in the mirror. Stare at a distinctive point in your eye or the iris, and then turn your head slowly, and you'll see that iris or your eyeball, it doesn't turn. Its orientation remains intact. So this is, I, th I find this to be very cool. And the next essential feature of our gyroscopic eyeball is what it renders for us, the horizon. The horizon just doesn't exist out there. Our eyes render it for us. And it's the same feature as the artificial horizon line on the attitude indicator instrument of an airplane. So again, what is a horizon? A horizon is the line at which the Earth's surface and the sky appear to meet, to converge. And it's the convergence point of things below and things above into the vanishing point, or the point at which receding parallel lines viewed in perspective appear to converge. The point at which something that has been growing smaller as it gets further away, it disappears altogether. This is due to the limits of our eyesight. It's a creation of our eyes. If we could see forever, we wouldn't have the horizon line. But then again, without the horizon line, we would not be able to distinguish between items that are above us or below us or taller than us or shorter than us in a distance. You've all seen the telephone poles in a distance. They will always, if it's taller than you, where you're standing, they'll be above that horizon line, your eye level line in a drawing or anything. And just a linguistic note, this is very interesting. The origin of the word horizon, which we never think about, but if you think about it, it means horizontal or level. And the concept of level or horizontal is very important in this discussion. quite amazing when you realize what horizontal means and that you don't realize oh, it's, it's a little bit more in this video you don't realize what you're not looking at 
Uh, is it a bit before? Hang on. I know it's got to be, I won't find it now. But it's in this bit here in the video. So basically, you're not realising the words that you're using and what they really mean. And that's back, back to etymology. Uh, I used a bit the other day. Um, no, no, it was uh, like it's been called Noah. I can't find it now, guys. Sorry. But, you know, when you look up what horizon means, there, that's it. Hor, I, zon, tall. Horizontal. Horizon. That's what I was looking for. Um, it's quite amazing, isn't it? When you see it this way, it's horizon. But when you put ATL on, it becomes horizontal. We just don't realise the words we're using, what they really mean. Um, for instance, in Arabic, horizon is It has literally, word for word, the meaning of that is level man mental. You know, it's almost like our internal mental leveling instrument. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, in Hebrew, the word for horizon also means level. I can't pronounce it, but there it is. And again, we just, you just realize that the ancients devised the word horizon because it is level, flat. In any language, horizon is going to mean horizontal or level. The horizon that our eyes render is our level. We have a built-in level. I find that fascinating. Uh, so to move on, um, the horizon it gives us our relativity. Just like the airplane's attitude indicator, it contains the horizon reference arm, our gyroscopic eye works using the horizon that it renders for us to act as our attitude indicator. And again, the horizon for us is the level marker or artificial horizon on a plane's attitude indicator. Our eyes also create the horizon further out if we ascend in elevation but necessarily still at eye level. If we go up in a lighthouse, our eyes will be able to see further, maybe you know, 10 miles, 20 miles further, and they'll, they'll render that at a greater distance, yet it's always going to be at our eye level. It's level. Our eyes create our horizon, which will be different for people depending on their height. If you're four foot tall, your horizon in your eye is going to be a different distance than someone who is seven foot tall. Um, but in all cases, the horizon is at each person's eye level, without fail, always. It's how we see using perspective. We need it. Um, like I said, our eyesight is based on perspective. So how do our eyes create perspective? Well, using our eyes as attitude indicators, our eyes render the stabilizing horizon line, and this allows us to determine whether something is above or below us, taller than us or shorter than us. This is how we determine if a staircase is going down or if it's going up. It seems obvious and redundant, I know, but it is essential that we establish these facts when we ponder how ridiculous it is to claim that an ever-descending landscape would ever rise to our eye level. You know, just picture yourself standing on top of the ball earth. It's impossible you know, for our eyes to function that way. We would not be able to distinguish between a flat level plane and one that is descending away from us. Because we just wouldn't be able to, to distinguish. That's not how our, our eyes work. We work based on the concept of level, horizon. Um, now depth perception, that's another part of pers um, perspective. Objects in a distance will be smaller in size. It's with the amazing design of our eyesight. If I'm six foot tall, and standing on a flat plane looking toward the horizon, uh, any other individual who's six foot tall will always be at my eye level. If he's right in front of me, he's at my eye level. 10 feet away, he's at my eye level. 50 feet, you know, a mile, two miles away, he's going to be at my eye level. That horizon level in a perspective drawing, that's that straight line across the page. No matter how close or how far away he is, if he's my height, he's going to be on, his eyeballs are going to be on that line. Um, and now, say a man who's four foot tall, well, he's going to be slightly below that line, no matter. I suppose when you think about it, it's actually obvious when you think about it that you have to have some kind of gyro system going on in your head. Because if it wasn't there, every time we went to walk forward, we'd fall over. We would just fall over because we wouldn't be able to d distinguish anything. Up, down, right, left, it wouldn't happen. 
So we have this built-in mechanism in our brains. I, I really learnt something from this video. I suppose I've never really thought about it. See, you can't think about everything, I suppose. But when I see things that are very interesting, I put them out. So yeah, I thought that was an excellent video, this one. How close or how far away he is, he's going to be below that line. And a nine-foot giant, well, he's going to always be above that line. If he's right next to me, he's going to be way above that line. If he's way off in the distance, his eyes are going to be above that line. This is the beauty of how our eyes work. And this is also impossible on a ball earth. We're designed to live on a flat plane. So this is, this is also how we're able to determine if we're walking toward a hill or a slope. You, know, you don't want to fall down a hill. You know, our eyes are designed so we don't fall down too many hills or too many staircases. You know, descending grades will never rise to our eye level unless they make it to a flat plane and then the flat plane extends off into the distance and then that horizon will rise to your eye level because you're based on a flat plane. This is how perspective works. Um, in these photos our eyes can distinguish between the downward gradients and the level sections. And like I said, the only reason the horizon rises to our eye level is because, you know, we are on top of a level plane. Whether you're on, you know, a hill or a valley, everything is built on the same level plane. So it will rise to your eye level. If it was on a ball, it would be impossible. No matter where you are or what elevation you're at on a ball earth, the underlying base structure is a ball or a spheroid or a pear which would necessarily descend away from you in all directions and therefore the horizon could never come to your eye level if it did it would be a crazy confusing world like MC Escher drawings you would not be able to properly distinguish between downward gradients level sections or upward gradients thank goodness our eyes allow us to distinguish between gradients and perceive depths Otherwise, our lives would be one giant slam session, just like in skateboarding. And I know what that pain feels like. <laughs> so, um, in perspective, it's awesome. It allows us to perceive distances. Objects get smaller as they move further away from us. And elevation, the horizon line being the leveling line. Anything below is lower than us. Anything above is above your eye level. This is the leveling feature of our eyeballs. On a ball earth, the horizon would never be at eye level, because in reality, it's always sloping downward. Why would your eye render it up at eye level? Just think of it, eye level, level. A ball earth is always descending away. So anyway, so we've watched so we've watched the video now. I really enjoyed that. Another explanation. I like finding these things out and even sharing them. I really hope this person who made the video doesn't mind. Thank you very much for making this excellent video. I mean, most of it we really know, but don't think about properly to realize what it really, really means because we're so programmed by that telly thing. Um, thank you very much to Just The Truthful for putting this post out and I hope nobody minds. And hopefully, if you didn't know, you know now. Anyway, what's your thoughts? Hello everybody, um, I had a message, there it is, Lizzo, wondering whether um, Rishi Sunak was Neil Sethi, totally not said that right, but anyway, it made me, well I already had a fair idea about who I thought they were, but I wasn't going to do anything, but when Lizzo wrote that and said, is he that person? That person looks a bit young to be him, to be honest, but who knows uh, what they do. But anyway, what I did was, I've got a picture of him and a picture of Ed Miliband. That's who I saw, that he looked quite alike. And yeah, they've got different hair and there's a few things that are probably different, but they'd have to be. But once you take the hair away, you'll see that they are quite alike. I mean, for Rishak, they've only got to change the hair and make his face a bit thinner because it's all a computer composite, that's what I see. But I actually think he's based on Ed Miliband. They've got the same kind of teeth, the same laughter lines, the same eyes. The only thing that is different is their hairline. And in some of the pictures, the uh, Ed Miliband, he is... Um, his nose is quite fat, 
considering what it was like when he was younger and I don't really understand how that works that he has a nose his nose changes as he gets older but I know that as we get older things do change a little bit on your face but anyway Ed Miliband and David Miliband were in the Labour Party and um, well they both wanted to be leader of the Labour Party which um, I think that Ed Miliband was but they both wanted to be Prime Minister but they didn't sort of get that far so it makes such sense that they get their round at being Prime Minister uh, just different person different parts um, that makes sense because greed and well, I don't even know what it is but I just think he looks quite like Ed Miliband they've got the same kind of um, smile I mean look at that I think they look quite similar their laughter lines and their teeth are quite similar and their eyes it's only the hair on the forehead that's actually different really but I put the pictures on top of each other just to show it don't forget Ed Miliband is a lot older in the picture I put on top but they look quite alike don't they well I think they do anyway I mean, yeah, I do think that they are the same person or based on the same person. Their laughter lines are the same. These bits that run down here, the way that they smile, it's the same. They have the same creases on their face, same lips, same chin. Yeah. They look quite alike. Anyway, I saw it all. This is and then when Lizzo was um, putting that comment in I thought it was best just to make a little video see they've got the same okay Ed Miliband is smiling a bit more but they've got the same laughter lines they smile the same way their face goes the same way when they smile uh, which way around his smile goes to the left and see there it is see that's the this picture here he's much younger his nose doesn't look like this person. This one's probably an actor or a, or a fill-in. I mean, they do look quite alike. But now I saw that video about Ed Shearer where someone looked like, just like Ed Shearer and uh, he went to a concert and then in the end Ed Shearer got in touch with him and said, well, when I can't make things, would you, would you go on my behalf? So these things do happen then, don't they? They just do uh, amongst the rest of the CGI and all the rest of it, deep fake, the whole thing. But I just thought they were quite alike. Anyway, the video's coming to an end now. So what's your thoughts? What do you make of this video? What it is is, um, we suddenly noticed something is really wrong. We started seeing extra faces when we should have done. And um, we'll just see it in a minute. So the first one is quite evil, isn't it? Because what it is is, yeah. Oh, we have to show the other one, don't we? To show everybody that one. There's another one we want to show you, but we'll, we'll do these, these two. There's the three of them in here. Now these are the kind of things that they're sticking in the footage. So there you go. Do you see it? So <laughs> the hat he's holding is going to be a face. It looks almost like he's beheaded the person that's what we saw you still see it you can see the face in his hat looking at you I just I think it's quite bizarre personally oh, there he is again it's the computer that does this oh this is this is it but they are evil, yeah. the people behind the people behind them. See look, this see Mickey does the other we've noticed like that bus that looks modern. That doesn't look like the nineties the back of that bus does not look like the nineteen thirties. Oh, and Mickey also noticed down here there's a face and there's a skull. Skulls down the bottom and there's a face at the top. It's just weird that you see a skull. Yeah. see the skull and then there is a face as well and then it's very weird when I made this video how that it goes past him because everything's super composed none of that is real none of it 
It's all a cartoon. And anyway, we're doing the, uh, this video is about from perspective of back and forth. You can see it can't be. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. yeah, it's not in the same perspective. They've been added. Oh, this is it. Oh, oh. the video, right. But it's even worse than that because what it is is it's like this is another piece of video playing just here. So when I see this, right, I see a man. He could be like in the radio or something. So there's his head. There's his forehead, his eye goes in, out to a nose, he comes down, there's his lips, there's his mouth, and there's his chin or beard or whatever, and it, it kind of looks like that, just put it on for a second. Oh, there you go. Oh, and then he changes into that person, still a man, but maybe an Indian now, looking out. But can you tell me to explain it? Oh my god. Yeah, so, so this is the back of the bus, and in the back, oh wait, do you know when it is, Mickey? It is that man standing on the side of the road, and he's in the bus. Yeah, it's in his shoulder. Yeah, because that's... It's the same thing here, the shoulder, arm, the <laughs> man But the bus yeah. is passing yeah. that man, that man is on the, is standing there. Yeah, the he's the one with the funny hand, hand. Yeah. yeah? But yeah. the bus is passing, but... You can make a you can make a face look like an Indian looking out, and actually the man is part of the bus and he can't because yeah, 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 yeah. 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 set up. The bus comes out to here, down, and here is the man, but he looks more like an Indian or something. I just think that's uh, I'm talking, talking now. There he is. I can't zoom in. Oh, well, we I can't zoom in, but you see, there's his hat, goes across, there's his eye, there's his nose, there's his beard, he looks like he's got long hair. Or even with an animal around him, like he's sitting on an animal. Do you see that? Do you see the face? So, this is a person who's passing off that way, but actually, it's someone looking at him. So, the side, this is another side of the passing. And when you look, it's like he's got a bit of a bowler hat and then eyes and a nose. It's just the action. One down here as well, Mickey. I'm quite sure. One there. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we're still trying to find the other one at the moment. No. No. It's there if you want to, if you want to see it, you'll see it. If you don't, you won't. Yeah, we were watching this bit here. It's a joke, by the way, but... You're watching this guy there, and this is he says, God, look, he looks like Trinity Four. <clears throat> but how did he get in here? Um, obviously, it's not Trinity Four, we know it's not, but he did look a little bit like him. Yeah, yeah, anyway, we're moving on again. Uh, so, we're back on because we found the one. This is the one we saw first of all, and it, it is when one of these people is going past. So first of all you have a sort of face down here if you can see it. And then you've got this person here with a hat on and maybe this is a flower and you've got two eyes with a black thing on. It obviously comes from a film or something. You see that face in there. And I was looking at this and I see two things now. When I first saw it just a second ago, so I turned it off for a second, I saw this as like a wolf. But really when you look at it, it's a it's a dragon. There's one of these things, there's one of these things. There's his mouth, there's his nostrils, there's his, he's laughing. Do you see the dragon? There's his eyes, his eyes are there. And it's a dragon. But if you look at it again, you can see it's a wolf. And this is what I've seen when I break all the footage down. This is what I've seen, it does my head in. Because I have to give up and make these videos five, ten minutes long. Each one could be a documentary about an hour. Because I start to look at it, it could be one thing or another and yet they make it into one. Anyway, so when we see the dragon, it's not just that, there's like a photograph of, some, of someone here. So there's his eyes, he's got a tusk of it, we can saw that one. But it looks like a photograph of a face, or a devil or something in there. And that's part, if you see it the other way, part of the dragon. I'm really hoping. People, please write in the comments that dragon, face there, there's a face there, but there's also, if you take the, don't see the dragon, there's a face down here. Any more? There's, yeah. 
But I just think that's disgusting. This is what the footage is full of. Mm -hmm. Full of this. Oh yeah, Mickey says that there's an eye and a nose. Yeah, there. That there. But this is what they're doing to you all the time. This is what the AI does. You don't realise every time you watch something, this is in there looking at you, doing things, and you don't even see it. And the only way you see it is to slow the footage down. But you know what? I used to think, oh, it's just, it's just old things. Yeah, yeah. But it isn't. I, it, every it, single yeah. piece of footage I go to, these things are in. Anyway, Mickey's witnessed it for himself. All my life, yeah. this. Yeah. You've witnessed, now you've seen, you've yeah, seen, seen yeah. you've seen, you've seen it as well. Uh, I, I, please, I hope that people do realise. I mean, the dragon, he's, yeah, he's yeah. kind of smiling. So there's a nostril, there's a nostril, this is his mouth. There's his eyes, and then, yeah, there's, there, well, that's one of his things, but where's the other one gone? Huh? Oh, anyway, that's the dragon, and then his body comes out here, but it's also a face in it, and there's also a face here, and another one down here, and there's just faces everywhere. And anyway, so he had about five, six minutes to go, whatever it was, four minutes. The faces in here, you just, if you can see anything else, we'll put it in here now. Look at that. Breakdown of the bus, the flat bus is passing on the, on the cartoon. It's because it just because I've slowed it down, it's just showing all the mistakes. So, this is supposed to be the end of that bus, it's supposed to be the 1930s, but I know it's all crazy because it is all crazy, but that kind of looks much more modern. You know, it's just a glimmer, you just get a second of it, and you see it, you go. Because I've stopped it now, well, that doesn't look 90. I know it's all blurry and the whole thing, but it just looks more modern. Anyway, we're going to carry on. You know, if you were actually in the bus, would it look like this? All because it's been made for you and it is a cartoon. Well, there's a nice ad up there for Gordon's gym, up there on the side of the building. But um, it all looks ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Look at that. That is the back of this bus. Look at it. Yeah, look at that. S-A-K-E. <coughs> S-A-K-E. It's almost like a face up there, makes you look like an Indian. It's on the top of his head. Oh, there's another one, like an ape. Oh, I don't know. Did you see the ape? Oh, there's always faces and things in there. Face upon face. Remember 9-11 when the smoke went up? Yeah. Shoulders, the face of the one below. Yeah, they yeah. all mixed in. This is what they do. How they do it. Anyway, we're going on to the last bit now. Yeah, it's definitely like a monkey or something in there as well. Oh, right. Well, we spotted another one. So you've got the bus driver here. Alistair Crowley. And then there he is. There, in there. Do you see? There's his. Sorry, he's got. Mickey's got no mouth to cover, but there's his hair. There's his forehead. There's his eyes. There's his nose. You see it? Do you see these things? Disgusting. So the bus is gone now. You see the face? No. Only in their footage. Sorry, I mean superimposed into the footage. Well, looking at this bit of footage, this is quite amazing with this bus, right? This is what the video is called. The lion is in the bus. Now, does that look real? Which means these aren't real. None of this is real. It's all a cartoon. I mean, for me, once I, well, you just know it is. You just know it is. It, to me, yeah. So here comes the bus, and look what happens to the bus. And then basically, you see it. It's just disgusting. And then it, yeah, I stop it, and actually, you'll see that the lion is in the bus. Or was it? When it I'm not the next one then. Yeah, so we've got the front of the bus now, so the lion is in the bus. You can, you can still see his paw. Just. Yes. So the lion is in the bus. You can't have the lion in the bus. He'd be behind the bus. Because there's no real glass there. Oh, I just. I 
I'm just thinking. It's just the head, it's the head F-U-T-K. There you go, you can see that the bus is superimposed. If you look here, around here, this is disgusting. Look at the tyres, look at it all. Look at it. It's a piece of poo. From the beginning. Mm. There you go, double wheels. Yeah, I told Vicky that I saw bus with double wheels on there. No, neither have I. We'll do that again. Good That is quite amazing. I mean, I'm not sure if there's glass right to the front, but you can see that that is flat. And I'll show you a couple more in a minute, because this comes from a different video that's on, on Scramble. But um, when I was showing it to Mickey today, because it's not out yet. Oh, there's writing on those books down there. Mm -hmm. See it down here. Letters. Um, I was showing this to Mickey, and, and it's like it's just this is. I think this is what it is. This is what I see all the time. But this is a really good video to show. It with Jeff said it's absolutely perfect. It Show the total manipulation and lies that they're doing. Either the people making it for money, or this is how they're fabricating our history. <laughs> or say this was done in the 1930s, and then they were already into into, into CGI. But in all the videos, Stan and Laurel, it's the BBC, it's Biden, Trump, it's all of them. And you know, Chris Whitty is, was, Theresa, no, sorry, Elizabeth Trust. Trust us. Yeah. Anyway, so, so hopefully you can see this now. See the back of the bus isn't there, like, you can see the building through the bus. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. I don't know if I have words anymore for this. It's just so disgusting. Anyway, let's stop it a moment. So this is supposed to be the 1930s and buses travelling around in London. So basically, it's like, do you see it? Um, I'm not playing the whole of this video, but do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop another bus. There, there. You see, the, we're going to do it here. So this is another video on Unscrambled. But do you see that the bus, this bus is not in the same perspective as the background and it sort of flips a bit here. So mm. this bus has been added on top of this footage and you can see there are different perspectives. So that's what this video is about. This video is on the Unscrambled channel waiting to go out. Uh, I, I just, it's mind blowing. Anyway, we've gone on long enough on this one, we were showing the bases. But go and watch it on the Unscrambled channel. Anyway, thanks for watching another weird video.